Welcome back to the Capitol. The budget to defense in the National Assembly is in full gear as lawmakers have been hosting ministries, departments and agencies. Now, during one of those, the Minister for State Petroleum revealed that the government had no intention to do away with fuel subsidy. That's our next report. Within the week on the review, the various committees of the House of Representatives held inaugural meetings to prepare members for the budget defense. We cannot continue to be dosa about our environment and pretend that all is well. It is our collective responsibility to save our environment and save our country, and this we must do. A committee that is charged with the onerous task of excising legislative oversight on the health institutions we have in Nigeria. I think in our committee, we have all the federal university teaching hospitals, all the federal medical centers in Nigeria. Ensure that all procurements of goods and services carried out by agencies and parasatels on behalf of the federal government of Nigeria comply with the Procurement Act. Ensure that all entities outside those in the above which desire at least 35% of the funds appropriate for any type of procurement from the Consolidated Revenue Fund comply with the provisions of Public Procurement Act. Mr. President, we should all see ourselves. The Committee on Air Force invited the Chief of Air Staff to brief it on the strides attained in the fight against insecurity and requirements ahead of the budget defense. I want to assure this House and the Air Force management team that by next year, January, we are going to engage the U.S. Congress Committee on Air Force on our super tecanos. And we promise ourselves we are going to do something to get our platforms. The NAV is currently engaged in six major operations within Nigeria. In the last five years or thereabouts, we have flown about 65,000 hours. We have flown about 64,996 hours. Out of this number of hours, we have flown about 21,912 hours in the Northeast alone. The Chief of Air Staff appreciated Parliament for passing the Air Force Institute of Technology bill. If everything you require, you have to ask for spare parts outside, then it means those that are giving you those spares, if they don't want to give you, they can ground you. But with the Air Force Institute of Science and Technology in place, we believe that that will help us to build the required capacity uh, to be able to address some of the aircraft maintenance difficulties that we are facing. After the inaugural meetings of the committees, budget defense commenced as ministries, departments and agencies trooped in to defend their budgets. The Minister for State Petroleum appeared before the Joint National Assembly Committee on Petroleum to defend his budget. He's spoken why payment of fuel subsidy is unlikely to end anytime soon. If we fix the refineries and we're able to uh, pump from the refineries, that will also reduce the cost of subsidy on the government. So the government is looking at it more from that angle than from the angle of removing subsidy. So it is not on the card at all. He also commented on agitation to declare some states as oil producers. If you are already producing oil, we will know that you are producing oil. I cannot hide it. At least they uh, will be moving the oil from your state and you automatically will become oil producing. It is not actually in, in, within the powers of the Ministry of Petroleum to designate any state oil producing. Meanwhile, the appearance of the Minister of Mines and Steel for his budget defense gave room to address questions associated with artisanal or illegal mining. How come that foreigners get licenses to mine in our own territory and the indigents don't get licenses? They live in this area, they dig the ground quickly, they get something and they sell it. They are not telling them before they do that, they must get a license. Before they do that, they must pay to government. They must declare what they got and pay to government. They are, they are averse to that. That's why they are not benefiting. We are trying so much. We want them to come in. It's them that are pulling away because of their illegalities. There's a department in the ministry 
That's how important they are. At Sina Minus, small scale minus. It has a, a, a whole department in the ministry that caters to their uh, to them. So level of compliance of at Sina Minus is still what we are fighting with. Because we are trying to bring them in and it's difficult for them to come because uh, they are used to look, what I get is mine, and they sell and make money. When the Minister of Power appeared before the House Committee on Power for his budget defense, the Mambila Hydropower project was the center of discussions. Actually, uh, after going through the file, I discovered that nothing to say about Mambila. So I, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm starting afresh. This project, the total cost all in, is estimated to be $5.73 billion. When I say estimated, the construction cost is fixed in the EPC contract. But there are many other costs that make it up, enumeration, compensation, uh, so many other things that are not fully known at this time. They were all embedded in the costing of the project. And Mr. President Wari and President Xi came to an understanding in 2018 that the government of China would finance 85% of that project under a China Exim Bank loan. And the Nigerian government would finance 15%. Now, the negotiation for the China Exim funding is ongoing under the leadership of Ministry of Finance.